Okay, so you want to show percent change in your column chart in Microsoft Excel. Let's see how we can do this. Okay, so here's the data that I'm going to use for my chart. I've got months for the category access and revenue for the value access. Now I'm going to have another month column between these two columns. You'll see why this is important later on in the video. And all we're going to do here is say equals and then the month in column A. And I'll copy this down. Then next to the revenue column, we're going to refer to the next month's revenue. So all we do is we say equals and then the following month's revenue. And then you'll copy that down as far as the penultimate month. Then we need to calculate variance. So the difference between the current month and the next month's revenue figure. So it'll be the next month's revenue figure minus the current month's revenue figure. So if I copy that down. So then I need to split these variances into increases and decreases in two different columns. So I'm going to do that with a simple if. I'm going to say equals if this value is greater than zero, then I want to return this value. Now we actually want to return it as a negative value because we're using error bars in our Excel chart. You'll see how this works later on. So it's going to be minus E2. Otherwise, I want to return an empty text string. So two speech marks, nothing in between. Close the bracket. Copy this down. Apply some currency format. And then I need to do the same for the negative variances. I'd say equals if. Is this value less than zero? If true, return the variance. Otherwise, return an empty text string. So if I copy that down, I get the negative values from the variance column. So I'll apply currency format to this column as well. So then I need to work out the percent variance. And to do that, I need to work out what the variance is as a percentage of the current month's revenue. So that would be equals the variance divided by the current month's revenue. And then I would express that as a percentage value. Copy it down, and I've got my percent variance. Okay, so we're now ready to create the chart. And to create the chart, you need to select these three columns. Then I'm going to go to the Insert tab on my ribbon, and I want a column chart. Okay, so the first step is to select the next month revenue columns. And we're actually going to hide them. We're going to format them with no fill. So with the column selected, we go to the Format tab on our ribbon. Then we go to Shape Fill and No Fill. Then we're going to right click on one of those columns and go to Format Data Series. And the series overlap needs to be 0%. And the gap width needs to be 0%. Now, before we go any further, I'm just going to move the chart so it's not covering our data. Now, make sure that those next month revenue columns are still selected. So that's the columns with no fill. Then you're going to go to this plus button, top right of the chart, chart elements. And you're going to go to error bars and go to the sub menu and go to more options. Now, you need to make sure that the direction is both and that the end style is no cap. For error amount, you need to choose custom and then click on this button, specify value. So your positive error values are going to be in your increase column. And your negative error values are in your decrease column. Now make sure you delete what's currently in that box for negative error values. Otherwise you'll get an error. So then we select the decrease values and click on OK. So you can see now that I have my error bars on the chart. Now we're going to format these error bars so they appear as arrows. To do that, click on this little paint bucket. And we need to change our begin arrow type to an arrow. Then you can change the width of the arrows to whatever you want. And you can also change the dash type to whatever you want. You can also change the color. Maybe that's slightly too light. Okay, so now you can see you've got arrows in the direction 
that they need to be, either an increase in sales or a decrease in sales. Now, the next thing we need to do is show data labels for these arrows to show the percent increase or decrease. Now, again, you need to make sure that your chart isn't covering your data. So your first step is to select the invisible columns, the ones that have no fill. Then go to your plus button here. Then go to the data labels option and go to the sub menu and then go to more options. Then click on this button here, label options, untick value and tick value from sales. Then you select your variance values. Click on OK. And then if you want, you can change the text color for these variance values to match the color of your arrows. So you can do that on the format tab of your ribbon. Go to this text fill button or menu and choose the color you want to apply. Now you need to make a slight adjustment to the position of the negative percentage labels. So for example, if I click on this label here, you can see it selects all labels. But if I click on it again, it deselects the other labels. Now what I need to do is go back over to the label option buttons here on the right. Expand label options if necessary and change the label position to inside end. Then I need to do the same for this one and the same for this one. Now you might also want to show data labels for these blue columns. So if you click on one of the blue columns, all of them are selected. Go back to your chart elements button at the top here and just tick data labels. If you want, you can change the color of those data labels by selecting one of them. Then going up to the format tab on your ribbon, go to the text fill menu and choose your color. Now you can see the labels are overlapping here. Now one way of getting over that is to decrease the font size. But what I'm actually going to do is just increase the size of the chart. Now I'm going to get rid of the grid lines. And to do that, I'm going to go to this plus button, chart elements and untick grid lines. I'm also going to get rid of the vertical axis. So I go to the axis sub menu and untick primary vertical. And also we don't need a legend. Our chart title would be monthly sales. Now, the only thing I'm unhappy with here is the fact that there's more space on this side of the chart. So what I'm going to do is select the horizontal category axis. I'm going to go to this fill and line button, the paint bucket, and I'm going to select underline no line. That gets rid of the line across the bottom of the chart. I'm then going to select the plot area. So just click into an empty space here and I can maneuver the edge of the plot area. So it's slightly further away from the edge of the chart area. So then you can see it gives the appearance of there being equal space on either side of the chart. I haven't quite got it right. I'll move it in slightly more. You can see that that improves the appearance or the overall appearance of the chart. Now there's one thing left to do. I'll just zoom out a little bit. You can see that my month labels are not centered under each of these columns. Now this is where this value comes into play, center month labels, and I've got 18 in there. Now the way to get these month labels to center is to put spaces after the month text. So for example, let me just hard code Jan in there for the moment. If I put several spaces after that month label, you can see that it begins to center the January text down here. Obviously I need a few more spaces. Now we don't want to have to do that for each of these month labels. So I'll just reinstate the link to column A there. What we can do is concatenate that label with the result of the repeat function. So what we want to do is repeat a space a set number of times, which I've specified here. We need to lock that reference. And I'm doing that with F4 on my keyboard. That puts dollars in that cell reference. If F4 doesn't work for you, then please type in the dollars as you see them there. So if I then copy down that formula, you can see it nicely centers the month labels. Now, if they're slightly out, just adjust this setting. 
and they should eventually look centered. Okay, that's all I wanted to cover in this particular video. Hopefully that's useful. If it is, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe, and I'll see you next video.